It's great to have you, mate. Been watching you from afar for years. Firstly, I just want to ask, whereabouts are you recording this? I'm thinking you're at home. You've got your Gloucester uh, tactic board behind you. You love rugby that much. Um, yeah, where I'm are you? My house into the centre. Nah, um, I was having some works done at home, so I thought I'd come pop into the club, use some free Wi-Fi. So uh, it was nice and quiet for this interview. So as much as uh, I'd like to think I'm a professional with uh, some tactics on the backboard, I'm actually at work at the moment. There we go. There we go. Tactics are everything these days, especially under Rob Baxter. Let's talk about the game at the weekend. Then obviously uh, a try for yourself, a great win over in Cast. Um, it's a tough place to go in Europe sometimes, that is, especially round one. Um, how are the boys after the weekend? Was there a, a naked flight on the way home or a naked bus? Because you boys like to celebrate, don't you? Flying, yeah. Um, I love going out in Europe because the clubs are open till like 6am and we really, <laughs> we really let them dry. It was, uh, it was an awesome occasion. I think we just came off the back of some quite tough losses. Uh, we had the kind of injection of our in- internationals back. Uh, we had a really good week run, running up to it where we kind of looked back at previous trips to Europe and how much fun we had and how important they are to the club and how much uh, how much fun you can have on those trips just together. Not even if you even if you win or lose, just how much fun you can have traveling to France. And uh, we made the most of it and um, performed really well. And um, yeah, lost some clothes and some dignity on the party and partying afterwards, but. That was part of it. Oh, it seems like a wicked club to be at, right? Loads of energy, um, loads of lads that have come through the system there, a sprinkle of stardust, and then some South Africans just to add a little bit of physicality and weight to what you've already got. What's the lay of the land at Exeter at the minute? How are things? I know you. it feels like there's, there's a little bit of a transition phase that you're in at the minute. Some of the players that are moving on and players that are leaving, uh, but the fact that Rob Baxter and the other coaches have carried on is a good thing. But what's the lay of the land at the club? What's it like at the minute? Uh, I think, we, well, you've obviously seen we've had a bit of a hangover from that kind of long period of success where we got to finals every every year for, for a few years. And now we're kind of in a position where the players who've got us there are kind of exceeding uh, the expense to keep them. So they're, they've earned the right to you know, good salaries elsewhere. So I don't know what's going to be over in the next couple of years. But this year... Like just seeing them come back into the squad and playing well, those players who are leaving, I think it's exciting. You've got a really good chance this year of playing this in Europe. Um, yeah, I'm excited. I'm hoping to be around for a bit longer. And um, I've had some really good times and really good success here. So I'm, I'm excited where we're going. And just on that, obviously, with the players that have been announced to leave, obviously Luke Karandicki and... Uh, Sam Simmons as well. There's rumours around Jack Knoll. Um, is there much banter flying around the change room? Because from an outsider's point of view, every time we go to Exeter or watch you boys on TV, banter is, and, and that's it's a word just to chuck out there, but it's, it's central to what you boys do. You know, you're celebrating tries, you're rubbing each other in the face. It looks like you're having a great time day in, day out down there. Um, has much been flying around with the boys, lobbing Euros at each other or um, a few baguettes being chucked around? It was actually just great news for everyone because we all get we all get a chance to get a bit of their, their money there. They're opening up salary. <laughs> <laughs> They've got about half the tap just in those two players. So um, yeah, it's just uh, consideration for the rest of the players now who get to uh, make bit make a bit of a better living now they're going. Yeah, and on that, Ollie, and you might be able to answer this. You can straight bat me if you want, but there are rumours that you might be moving on. London Irish is being banded about. So this can work two ways. You can either say no, you can say yes, or you can say maybe and up your money at Exeter. <laughs> um, nothing set in stone right now. Um, just really enjoying being an extra this season. Yes! Uh, show, <laughs> show me the money, Rob. <laughs> There's a straight back if you've ever seen one. Uh, let's talk about Rob Baxter then. Uh, Hoggy said at the weekend he gave you a bit of a rollicking at half-time. Um, the performance obviously changed in that second half and um, you sort of cleaned up some of the penalties around the breakdown. But what is a Rob Baxter bollocking all, all about? Is he is he lobbing cups of tea? Is he a harsh taskmaster in that sense or is it very calm and collected? Because he loves a chat, doesn't he? He does. He's good with his words. He likes to control the room. Um, it's not. It's not like overly emotional. It's not like his feelings. He's like annoyed, angry. He's just like demands the quality he knows within us. Our attack. Our focus that week was the breakdown. I think Cast had the most turnovers in the French league. So our <laughs> our approach to the game was don't let them get 
jackals don't ever get turnovers and we gave loads of penalties in the first half. So it was just like, you guys know better what you're doing, sort it out. Um, no, he doesn't get overly emotional. He just, you know, he just tells us to us tells us what we need to know pretty straight. And what about expectations then, Ollie? You mentioned that the amount of success that you've had it's a natural evolution for for teams to have ups and downs. Like sitting mid table in the Premiership at the minute, and something we've discussed, there seems to be a shift in terms of the emotion around the Champions Cup at the minute. But what are the expectations for for the extra fans listening to this? Well, gone are the days where we. We just want to come to Europe and take part and have a scrappy game and maybe get a good win every um, every now and then. We want to win. We've won before. We've got a similar team to how, um, what we had when we did win. We've got the quality to win, so we're not going to come into um, a competition and see what happens. We uh, we want the trophy again. There's a statement. They want the trophy back, and obviously it's uh, a, a, you know a massive tournament with some big teams in. You, you're playing a, a big South African team this weekend. The Bulls coming over. Uh, that's going to be a physical battle. What are you expecting from that? Yeah, I mean, training and playing with Yanis Kirsten and Jacques Vermeulen, <laughs> um, the training room isn't fun, so playing against 15 of them is, is uh, going to be a battle. So I'm looking forward to it. I've never never played against, uh, well, actually, I've played against Sales Sharks. So I've played against a team of full South, South Africans. So I know what that's like. But, um, yeah, I'm excited. Uh, it's going to be a good double header. Obviously, they're coming to us, and then we're going to South Africa. So, I mean, if, if I'm on, if I'm in the team, that's going to be um, exciting. But you know, I'm going to have to get my body right to play against those boys on the weekend. What are the lads saying, Ollie? Then what were they saying at six o'clock in the morning when you were walking back from the nightclub after the game about Eddie Jones? And I say that because I want to know in terms of how you feel about it, because I'm not just saying this because you're on here. You're a player that has ripped up the Premiership and Europe for years, and you've been one of those players. And there are a few that have been overlooked for whatever reason. So if you can give them, let us know what the lads are saying at six o'clock in the morning when they've got no shirts on and no pants left because they've been ripped off. Were they saying anything or not? Well, we're not talking about Eddie at six o'clock in the morning, right? <laughs> but we're talking about Eddie. Either, but there's much more fun things to talk about, um, especially in those French clubs. But Eddie Jones, I don't know. I feel like the, the vibe is, I, don't, I think the guys in the camp weren't, I don't know, were supportive of the decision me personally I think it's all about timing I don't disagree with the decision maybe last year or after the World Cup I, I, I don't know just based on his record in the World Cup he has a good record in the World Cup um, but I do think the England team just should be way better than they are they should be feared and they're not um, I think team, even speaking to guys like Hoggy actually look forward to playing England because they play in a certain way uh, when England got the ball in um, in the opposition's half, like Hoggy's expecting them to kick, like he's he's just in the back for a way for a kick. And if you've got players that in England who they should be just pumping in tries, and you shouldn't be like waiting for them to give you the the ball back. Um, and yeah, I do feel like <laughs> I'm one of those players who I could be here um, quite bitter about it, but I'm going to try and just be as plain and as possible I just think they need to do better and um, I think it could be one of those decisions like if you look at the Twins in 2021 where they just had, they, they lost um, a manager midway through the season and got to the, got to the Prem and won based on morale pretty much morale and talent um, that could happen for England now. I'd love to see that happen so I hope it goes that way I hope it isn't just one of those ones where um they kind of stick with the same system they've got, just with a different coach, because that seems like, well, what's the point in getting rid of Eddie? And then if they try and change everything and it doesn't work, that would be quite sad to see. But, um, yeah, I think it's all about timing. No, 100%. And we'll see what happens with Steve Borthwick if he gets the job. Um, let's talk about Christmas then. Chiefs love a celebration. Tell me the Christmas party wasn't in the nightclub at 6am in France at the weekend. Do you have Christmas parties? You still allowed them down there? Yeah, we're allowed them. We're actually, I think that's one of the ones that, one of the things this season. We've always had good socials, but they've actually upped the amount of socials we've had. We're having them like monthly at the moment. Uh, this year, the Christmas social is probably going to be a bit tame because it's players and partners social. So, <laughs> um, guys are going to have to be on their best behaviours. Uh, but Christmas is going to be fun this year. We've got a home game against Bath. Uh, I think that game always sells out. So, um, 
yeah, I'm pretty excited about it. Have you, Ollie, have you got a secret Santa? Yeah, I've got one of the, I've just got one like young academy guys. I, don't, I need to do some digging on what he, what I need to get him. Um, I might just, like, there's some, been some pretty weird gifts over the year. I might just, just get him something completely random. Like what? Hit us with something. I mean, what generally gets bought? What kind of presents get bought for Secret Santa? Because we're, as a, the Rugby Pod, we're buying Secret Santa at the yeah. minute. So can you give us some ideas of what we could buy one another? Because a lot of the time you look for them long, big, rubbery things. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's, that's very true. Ian, Ian Wynn gets one of those every year. Um, <laughs> yes. Uh, We've had hamsters, fish, a turkey, uh, a, re- a live, live turkey, a live, a live turkey. <laughs> oh god! Um, yeah, I don't think anything top that. So I think we've, I think we've, we've been barred from getting um, live animals this year. So um, I might go back to getting a long rubbery thing. <laughs> <laughs> For myself, <laughs> and then get for myself. Oh, yeah. Nice. Just going back to the Champions Cup, is it a bit? There's a lot of talk about salary cap, especially in the Premiership at the moment. Is there a feeling that the kind of Premiership clubs are a little bit, I don't know, disadvantaged because of the cap that some of those French teams are allowed to spend and you know put a superstar lineup and get players from all over the world into their team? Yeah, I think I, I think it's very hard for English English teams. We play a lot of play a lot of rugby in out, out of Europe so the premiership's a very uh very difficult uh league to play in and yeah we I don't know I just it's hard to get around the fact that they can have more quality players in the squad compared to what we are just based on salary I think but um I don't know I guess if we can if you can use it in the right way use it as a chip on your shoulder I think you can um do well and the English teams have done pretty well in Europe so it's we are closing the gap does it feel different this year, Oli? And I say that because of this first round and you look at the stadiums, some of them are half full, some of them aren't even half full. We don't know whether that's because of the football or cost of living or whatever. What about as a player who's in the middle of it? Does it feel different to years gone by? I I don't know. I'll play, I play. I think it was because of the football. Oh, we played during the game, mm. so I can't really say. I'll probably wait a few more games to see how it pans out. At, but I uh, saying that at Chiefs we haven't we haven't sold as many tickets at the ground as 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 we usually have in years past. Like I remember um pre COVID there were sellouts most weeks, may bar a couple of premiership games which were which weren't like uh, the big sellers, but this year's in season I don't think we've had a sellout. We've got a new stand which hasn't been filled, so I think I think it, it has been affected. But let's let's see if uh the Christmas games usually have some excitement and a lot of people coming to watch so let's see how they go after that and just going back to the football um you mentioned it then you played during the game how were the french afterwards because obviously we lost to france uh you're out in a nightclub were they giving you big licks or were they quite humble i can't imagine the french being very humble about it to be honest no nah, i mean i mean when i want to cast that cast is like a very rugby town so and I don't think they couldn't really brag too much because we were just like, well, we need to do it. <laughs> <laughs> with you. So we had that leveler, so it wasn't too bad. Um, it was, it was, it was tough in the game because I could see they had like lots of uh, at the Cast Stadium. We've got lots of boxes, lots of hospitality boxes. I could kind of see the football in the back of the boxes, and I was trying to like <laughs> try not to watch the game mid midway through the game, and um, but. You could, they had um, they have lots of like beating drums. Um, I love that about the French teams. They have these like these bands that come to all the home games. And during the game, um, I don't know, wouldn't be anything to celebrate during the game. But then like the, the band would be going off or something. So I'm, I was pretty sure that like France were winning. I could tell because we were we were beating Cast pretty well, but the crowd were kind of going off about something. So I could kind of tell something was going on. Oli, do you have an opinion about the growth of the game? Because we're talking about football there loosely, and it's massive. It's absolutely huge all out throughout the world. The rugby's in a bit of a weird spot at the minute. As a guy that's carving up, scoring tries for fun, the glitz and the glamour of the great game that we love, do you have an opinion on the direction of the game, the growth of the game, what we, what they, what us should be doing? Yeah, I well, I look at the other football, I look at American football because that's, that's, that's the sport I watch most outside of rugby and they that is just so profitable 
and the way they do it is so, so entertaining. Uh, what I love about American football is they have all their games on, on a Sunday and it's like an event. It's like a, like the whole country gets involved. And I was, I was, I don't know, it would be a good way of um, having that with rugby. I can imagine like, having all the games on a Sunday and it would be part of like, you have your Sunday roast, then you watch your team play. Um, and that's one thing, one way of doing it. I know the NFL, they're run as franchises. Um, you know, I'm not too business savvy, but I just think just the way we've lost two clubs this year, I don't think that would have happened in the NFL. Like the NFL would have like, as an umbrella, would have looked after the teams and made sure everyone was profitable um, and not just, you know, let the things happen with what's with more stuff um, go down. So I look at other sports and they just get it so right. It's such an entertainment. I've been to games, the half the halftime shows, the kind of I'm, I'm I love it when you boo a kicker. Like I just want I just want the the vibe at a game to just be um, up there with the American football, the basketball stuff. So. Yeah, definitely. Now, what you mentioned just then about losing Wasps and Worcester, um, two clubs that have obviously gone to the wall. Uh, what's it like as a player when that kind of happens? Obviously, at Exeter, there's the, the chat around the hotel being sold and some land, etc., to keep the club going. Obviously, Tony Rose coming and, and done that. But from a player's perspective, are there, are there whispers in the changing rooms about the finances and what's happened with the other two clubs? Well, uh, I think we've all we all know Exeter's pretty sound financially and they did iron out any any rumors any issues Rob came and spoke to us and like look you're fine guys um because obviously there's if you get any like sniff that we're gonna go down as well it could, it could be really bad I think it was just pretty gutting seeing those teams go we had some uh, we had a bit of a rivalry with Wasps we had them in the final couple of times quarter final of the European Cup it was pretty gutting to see them go and then from an individual point of view, um, there's players who are negotiating contracts and you have like 150 players, good quality players come into the market and the salary cap's gone down. It's uh, not a good layout. Uh, so it's it's pretty brutal from just like an, a, a rugby fan, a, a, a member of the sport. And it's pretty brutal from a point of view where you've got to make a living and make sure um, finances are right. So it's... Um, yeah, I can't really. There's not much positive things to say about it, is there? No, it's tough. It, it is tough, and and that's the thing with players. I think people forget that the the market's now flooded, and the obviously the salary cap's going down, so it is tougher on the players. And you know, ultimately, you want everyone to be in a position to be able to have a great career, but also be successful and and bank as much as you can because it's a short career, isn't it? Yeah, it's also good to talk about it as well, like the fact that Ollie, you're playing at what's perceived as one of the most successful clubs, a club that is a profitable club in terms of, I say profitable in terms of you've got no money problems, so profitable is probably the wrong word at the minute. Um, and it is quite negative. It is a little bit doom and gloom in rugby at the minute. And I think if we shy away from that, then we're not telling the truth. Like we talk about it on here every week, the state of the game and the growth of the game and all these things that need to happen that don't seem to be happening. Um, let's try and finish on a positive. Are you positive about the future? Like if you, if you, t if you take out, and it is such a big thing, the fact that you're out of contract, you try to negotiate, look at another club. Are there any positives out there that you, you can feel that you can see that are in the n near distant future? Near distant future. What the hell is that? Uh, the near future. <laughs> the near distance, halfway. Yes, yeah. Um, yeah, not... Uh, saying that, not 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 saying I'm not positive about the future. I just this is I was sad about what happened to us and, and Worcester. Um, for from from a rugby point of view, the the sport is entertaining. You go to the games like the start of the Premiership. There's so many good quality games. I, I was involved in a couple where we lost to the last minute. We won won in the last minute. Like the the game, the product is good. I just think we need to find a way to to milk that entertainment and make sure it's going at going out to the masses and, and um, we we can get some of those some of those fans who just watch the Six Nations to come back and watch the clubs. I think that's probably something we should focus on. From my point of view, I'm very positive. I'm I'm really enjoying my rugby at the moment. Um, kind of went through a bit of a, a, a dull stage just kind of pre and post COVID and then I feel like I'm really enjoying being on the pitch and um, you know, I'm 
feel like I'm I'm doing well as a 31 year old ringer in a really tough market. I think oh, I've done the best, done the best I can, and just uh, just being grateful that I'm at a club where I can play at a top at a top level. Pod 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 pod. Rugby pod.